and hello everybody welcome back to the channel before we do get into today's video as always make sure you do drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more celtic content so hope you guys are all okay we've got a lot to discuss in today's video with regards to transfers um which we'll get to in just a second apologies for no upload yesterday i was ill i couldn't really record a video um, but of course, since I last spoke to you guys, we played a friendly again in the America preseason tour against Chelsea and won four goals to one. Another superb performance from Brendan Rodgers' men. I'm really happy with the result again. I said 2 1 in my prediction. I felt like Celtic were going to win, and that's exactly what we did with one style as well. A very, very good overall performance from the players. Uh, a lot of standout performers again. You know, Matt O'Reilly again being superb. No wonder he's linked away constantly. Um, but we'll discuss him in as well in just a second. But let's start today's video by going over uh, Leicester City, who are reportedly considering a st substantial bid for Celtic's Japanese midfielder, Rao Hatate, according to Stephen McGowan of Mail Sport. McGowan, known for his um, accurate scoops in Scottish football, believes Leicester might test Celtic's determination to keep their star player. Despite injuries limiting his impact last season, Hatate has still played a crucial role towards the end of the campaign, helping Celtic to secure a league and cup double. His performances have caught the eye of several clubs, but Leicester City seemed to be leading the chase. Atata, who recently extended his contract with Celtic in 2028, has expressed ambition to play at the highest level. This has fueled speculation that he might be open to an ambitious move away from Glasgow. However, the question remains whether Leicester City, likely to finish mid-table or battle in relegation in the Premier League, fits the bill for Atata's aspirations. Of course, adding another layer of complexity to the Celtic the situation, Celtic are fending off interest in another key player, Matt O'Reilly also. The club's resolve will undoubtedly be tested this summer, but it seems unlikely to allow both midfield stars to depart in the same transfer window. And that's the main thing as well. I mean, Atati interest, um, I'm not surprised he's, he's a great player for us, but if that interest is alongside Matt O'Reilly, there's no way we can let both players leave. Now, again, with the Atati situation, similar to the Matt O'Reilly situation, we do hold all the cards, really. Both players have got fairly fresh contracts. Celtic are in no rush to sell either unless they meet the valuation. But we can't, in any sane mind, sell both O'Reilly and Hatati in the same transfer window. That would be an absolute ludicrous. Um, but yeah, as the transfer window does heat up, Celtic fans will be hoping their club can retain Hatati and O'Reilly, key figures in their recent successes. For Leicester, securing Atati would be a statement sign as it ends the strength from their squad of the upcoming challenges of the Premier League campaign. The coming weeks will be critical as the Celtic navigate interest from ambitious clubs looking to lure away their top talent. Um, but yeah, another one as well. Atati's ambition is to play in the top end of European football. Leicester doesn't really fit that bill, to be completely honest with you. Of course, they've been in the Champions League a few times, or Europe a few times recently, but um, since falling from that uh, pedestal, and now we'll be battling in relegation for most likely this season. So does does Leicester really fit Hatate's bill for a you know European club? No. Uh, but money talks as well. Leicester have a lot more money than Celtic to spend on wages. Of course, our wage structure you know does limit us in certain areas. Um, so that's an option there as well. Leicester were one of the clubs interested in Matt O'Reilly as well. Whether they now think Matt O'Reilly's valuation is too high, they want to focus on someone else at Celtic like Hatate. That could be a that, that could be their thought process as well. Um, but as things stand, Hatate being linked by well linked to linked to a move to Leicester City, and they are very much interested in him. Again, the transfer fee hasn't really been exposed on how much it would have cost to lure him away from Celtic, but I imagine it'd be quite high given the fact he's got a contract until twenty twenty eight. But let's go over the Matt O'Reilly situation again as well, because Celtic have stood firm in their evaluation of midfield and Matt O'Reilly rejecting multiple offers that fall short of their desired £25 million plus mark. Despite receiving three votes from Atalanta and one from Southampton, none have met Celtic's asking price, with all offers coming un in under £20 million. The Scottish champions are expecting both clubs to return with improved proposals as they are prepared to start the Premiership title defence against Kilmarnock this Sunday. O'Reilly, who has been a standout performer in Celtic midfield, uh, continues to impress during the pre-season matches against Manchester City and Chelsea. Atalanta, winners of the Europa League, had their most recent bid of £15 million plus additional incentives swiftly rejected by Celtic. With the team now focusing on a Sunday after return from America, it remains to be seen whether Matt O'Reilly is involved in the match. 
But for him not to be either Atalanta or Southampton to fork out an extra £10 million this week, really frustrating situation on the matter. Already. Well, I mean, we know how much he's worth. £25 million is what Celtic want. Uh, but three bids from Atalanta below £20 million is kind of taking the piss a little bit. Or Southampton doing it's the same thing once as well. Um, if they want to sign him, they need to fork out an extra £10 million on what, on what they're currently offering. Again, praise the matter, Riley. Head very much focused on the season ahead with Celtic. Um, not letting this interest in him deter him from playing you know, well for, for his current team. Um, Celtic in pre-season, he's been a superb standout player, in my opinion. And hopefully he'll be there and available to play on Sunday if needed against uh, on the opening day of the season. That would be... That'd be brilliant to see. Um, but of course, you know, there's still a lot of teams interested in him, bar Atalanta and Southampton. I'm sure one of them will be able to reach that £25 million valuation that Celtic want for him. Uh, but him, him himself, he seems pretty content at the club, pretty much focused on the season ahead and what's to come. Um, and he'll be a key player for us if we can keep hold of him. So yeah, two you know, big big stories today with, the, with regards to transfer outings. Could Hatati be on his way to Leicester City? Possibly, if he thinks they reach his expectations and if they can match Celtic's transfer fee they want for him. Again, it's not been mentioned how much Celtic actually want for Atate, but I can't imagine us wanting to sell Atate given the ongoing situation with Matt O'Reilly. So I think that one will be pretty put, put, put to bed pretty quickly because I think Matt O'Reilly, his move out of the club is inevitable. I think Celtic know that. I think they know some team will match their valuation for him. And I think they would, if that's the case, they want to keep hold of Atate because they don't want to lose both players. Um, of course, we have signed Paolo Bernardo already this summer, but he's in the midfield player we signed having both Atate and Matt O'Reilly at our disposal. So we can't uh, lose two midfielders and sign one in Paolo Bernardo. Paolo Bernardo is there as an additional to both players, uh, Tate and Matt O'Reilly. And I think if Matt O'Reilly leaves, we need to sign another midfielder as well. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on what we discussed in today's video with regards to, first of all, Hattate to Leicester City. Do you think that could happen? Um, do you think that would happen instead of Mata Riley? Do you think Celtic would even sell him if Mata Riley leaves? And what do you make of the ongoing Mata Riley situation as well? Do you think, well, do you think he'll be at Celtic for the opening day of the season? Yes or no? Let me know your thoughts down below. Also, let me know your thoughts on the whole uh, preseason tour of America. I think it was very, very successful. Um, Got to, got to see a lot of uh, obviously American Celtic fans out there as well, and the team played really, really well for them as well for showing their support. It was superb uh, overall preseason tour. Um, but yeah, as always, make sure you do drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more Celtic content. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.